praise God for God's children who's here during that day. Amen. Our young adult group, thank you, God, for them. Let's give God praise now. Praise God for
If you got one hallelujah left in you that you've been holding all service, if you got one Thanksgiving left in you that you've been holding since last Sunday, if you got one good shout anywhere, why don't you give it to God right now? Come on and help us. Come on and help us. Come on and bless God. Come on and do that. Amen. 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 And amen. Can we give these ladies a big hand clap of love? They have blessed us today tremendously. Can we thank God for that teenage preaching sensation, Reverend Jeremiah Jackson, who blessed us on last Sunday. Help me encourage his heart. He's preaching this Sunday as well as Minister Darby at 745, Reverend Christian Goldman at 1145. Get your Bible, church. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4, standing on your feet. Thank you for these families who are sharing their family reunion with us. Thank you all so much for being here today. It blesses us for you to bring your kinfolk and your friendfolk to be able to worship with you at your church. Glad you are proud of us. You know, some folk don't want you to go to their church. They ain't happy about their church, you know. But I'm happy y'all happy about us enough to say, come on, go to church with me. Hear my pastor. You know how they do. Amen. Glad that you all are here. We're going to pray. We're going to read, and then we're going to share a sermonic thought with a neighbor. Let's ask God's blessings upon our, our time together. Heads are bowed. Hearts are humble. Let's pray. I pray this morning, God, in public as I have in private, for the financial bounty, blessing, and benefit of those who love you. This morning in sacred supplication, God, I stand against poverty, but I stand for your divine provisions. God, I stand against lack, but I stand for increase. God, I stand against satanic attack, against the family finances that are under my voice today. Yet, I stand for divine substance and divine supply. Father, as I pray, not only save souls, but God, do a new thing in us with our substance. God, have us look at money differently. Have us consider what we do and handle it faithfully. God, I, play, I pray even now, Lord, not just for bills to be paid, but for the increase that will come, that will be for our children and our children's children. Do it for your glory. That's why we pray it even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say thank you. And those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ said amen. Second Kings Church, chapter 4. We're looking at verses 1 through 7. I'm reading from the King James Version. If you don't have a Bible, peep somebody's book with, that has one with you because I want you to see what God has to say. Second Kings. Did I say Samuel or Kings? That's right. Second Kings. I feed the children different cuisine, you know. At 745, I fed them one thing, so I'm doing something else here. Second Kings. Chapter 4. Verses 1 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. Now that cried a woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen, slaves. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? What you, what you coming to me for? Then he said, tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, 
Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad from all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. You know, some stuff y'all read ought to make you shout reading it. Just so this lady broke, right? I'm just, let me just say it the way I, you know. So this lady broke. <clears throat> she don't have no money. Her husband had died. And her boys really can't find work, but they can't be slaves. So she, she got creditors calling her because it's the first of the month. She don't have enough money. So she runs to the house of the Lord. She says to the man of God, hey, listen, my husband served God. And uh, he did serve you too. And so you got to do so. So the preacher said, what you want me to do? I'm not no musician. You know, I'm not a magician. You know, what you want me to do? And so he said, I'll tell you what. What you got already? Because the answer is already in your hand. So while you searching for what you already got, it, you just don't know. She says, well, I ain't, I ain't got nothing but a cruise of oil. He says, good. That's all we need. He said, tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go borrow as many pots, pans, and vessels as you can. Even if it's got some in it, pull that out, borrow as many as you can, go home, close the door on you and your sons, and then pour out into the vessels. And so she took one cruise and filled up a house full of vessels. Okay, y'all sleep too. Hey, y'all. She took one cruise and then filled up a house full of vessels. Hey, y'all up there. Y'all listen. She had one little bitty thing of oil, but she kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring until she filled up all the vessels in the whole house. She runs back to the man of God and said, what you want me to do? He said, sell what you got, pay off your bills, keep the rest for you and your sons. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap. Let everybody else in. Come on, let the worship present. Grab a neighbor by the hand, say, neighbor, I need to be in church today because God is about to redirect my financial future. Tell them, look at me good now because this is before the increase happens. Tell them, God is about to do something in me and for me. I, can you feel the Holy Ghost in this Look at him and say, neighbor, preacher needs your prayers, all of your amens. Today's sermon subject, I'm sick of being broke. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise right where you are. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may retire. A year and a half ago, a lady, Dr. Allen, of our community came because she wanted to buy a house. Inspired by the advertisement she's seen, and by houses for other people, she came. But Dr. White, when they assessed her financial background and where she was economically, not only was her credit bad, but she was financially broke. When they told her that, her attitude changed. And instead of becoming bitter and angry, she became hopeful. She said, not only am I coming back, but I'm going to come back with more than I had today. She said, because I'm sick and tired of being broke all the time. There comes a point in your life 
Well, you look at what you have in your hand. And you look at whose hand you are living in. And discover that what you have now is not all God wants you to possess. When you can get past jealousy and envy. And stop being upset about what God has done for somebody else. And start to realize that we got the same daddy. So if daddy blessed them, he can do the same thing for me. You reach a point where you can say, I'm sick of being broke. This is for people today who work every day, but ain't got a dime to show for it. This is for people Ed, who go to work with folk that don't like you. You really don't care to see them, but you got bills and need your job. This is for people who have children who think your wallet prints 20s automatically. Yet you struggle from month to month and from paycheck to paycheck. Let me give y'all the word because I got to do three more services a day in three more cities. Listen carefully. Your broke days are going to soon be behind you. I don't care who said otherwise. You have a God who sits high, who looks low. In fact, check this out. It won't even matter who wins the presidency. What God is about to do for you is above and beyond democracy. You won't be able to legislate it. You won't be able to turn it off. You won't be able to stop it. It will be for you and your family the blessing of the Lord. Some of y'all don't know when to shout. But if I gave you the winning Powerball numbers, we wouldn't have to play no music or ask you to clap. And what I'm standing here today telling you is, this is the only time today in five sermons I'm going to teach this. So I want you to act like this is tailor-made for you, that your bills are going to be paid, that your children are going to have open doors of opportunity, that what God is about to do for you is going to transform your financial future. Who am I talking to? Who, who, who is this for already? I need for you to grab this. I'm going to teach this. Give me 15 minutes, I promise you. I want to cover the biblical principles that guide, guard, and govern wealth. And I'm going to sit down and be happy by myself. How does it happen, Pastor Adolph? Let me tell you how it doesn't happen. It ain't going to happen playing the lottery. You might win a couple of two, three dollars here. It's only to keep you coming back to be broke. It's not going to happen if you give a church a $5 bill, do a James Brown split and run around and then say, the Lord did it. That's dumb here. That's dumb. Here is how it's going to happen. Number one, write these principles down or go and buy this disc today. Number one, you have to reach the point, listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen, where you get to the point where you encounter the blessing of nothing. When people ask you what you have, many of us are just like this woman. I ain't got nothing. And you have worn nothing so well, other people are jealous of your nothing. Folk have the unmitigated gall to be envious of you, and you ain't got jack. Just wait until you get something, they're going to really hate you then. I'm doing good already. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, beyond what you think nothing is, there is a place called nothing where you have no money, ain't got a dime, no hope, and no options. Let me suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, you will not open the business God is going to open for you until you've reached nothing. You will not see doors open for you until you get to the place called nothing. See, some of y'all sitting here have always had a little something, something. So you can't get happy about folk who've been through nothing. But if some of y'all in here know what nothing feels like, know what nothing looks like, know what nothing sells like, you have been where you ain't have nothing. 
Pastor Adolf, why does God use nothing to bless us? So that when you get something, you have to know it came from him. I need 20 of y'all, I'm trying to hurry, that will say everything I got came from God. The miracle cannot happen until you reach a point where you have nothing and no options. Look throughout the Bible, Cameron. Look carefully. When you study the Bible, the miracle happens when you have nothing. The woman with the issue of blood has spent all she had and has nothing left. Then she presses her way through the crowd, touches the hem of his garment, and gets well. And when, she, and when Jesus turns around, he says, who touched me? She's kneeling on the ground and told him, I have no money. The doctors couldn't help me. Nobody could strengthen me. But I told you were coming through town, touched the hem of your garment, and got well. Every time you see nothing, you ought to shout. Why? It's the starting point of Almighty God. The man with the withered hand had no money. Blind Bartimaeus did didn't have a dime. You ought to be happy. This first shout today is for folk who ain't got nothing. And people are jealous of you sometimes because you wear your nothing like it came from Neiman Marcus, but you know you ain't got nothing. You ought to tell God, start right now, God, because I ain't got nothing. I don't have a lot. God bless. Can I, can I tell you what y'all do? Say, God bless my nothing so I can give you all the glory for it. Let me hurry because I have several principles. Everybody say the blessing of nothing. Can I, can I throw one more shrimp in the gumbo right quick? You can't get happy about hitting rock bottom until you learn there's a rock at the bottom. Uh, can, I, can I go on? I got much more to say, but can I just go on? Number one, everybody say encounter the blessing of nothing. Number two, here was how it's going to happen. When you seek, watch this, wisdom from God. You got to commend this woman in the passage. Because what she does, Erica, is run to the man of God with her burden, her problem, and seek God first. I'm so sick of saints who want to do sinister deeds but have sanctified results. Hey, listen. If you're going to do it the world's way, just do it the world's way. Holler back when you get some time. Because this way requires faith in God. It ain't going to make no sense for you to give God 10 cents and you ain't got but a dollar. But if all you got is a dollar, you too broke not to try it. At some point, you have to reach a place where you're going to say, God, I'm going to trust you and you alone. Can I tell you a secret? Here is a warning. When you see God, don't expect to understand the answer he gives you. Because when you seek God, he's going to call you to a new dimension of faith in him. While you riding on the boat, God going to say, get out, walk on the water. When you say, God, I'm ready for you to bless me, he's going to let you get laid off from your job. Be careful. Let me, I'm just trying to warn you so you won't come back and say, I lied to you. Be careful when you say, God, have your way. Wait, you may not want that because God will let your lights get turned off. God will let your car note get behind. But it's only to push you to a place that you've never been before. Some of us are so comfortable where we are that we want God to make sense to us. But I promise you, here is how you know it's God. It makes no sense at all. Number three, write this down. Everybody say, seek God. Wait, what's the warning? It ain't going to make sense. You understand that? Number three, watch this. Watch this. Start an enterprise. Everybody say, start an enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this carefully. I'm thankful for the gainful, suitable employment many of us have. But what the Bible calls slavery, we call employment. Listen carefully. As long as you do it for them, there is a glass roof over your head. Somebody else is telling you every day what you are worth. When the truth is, here's your second shout, you're worth way more than that. 
Watch this. Let me see the hands of those who know you underpaid right now. Mm -hmm. And let me see the hands of those who work for somebody every day. Listen to me carefully. God is saying while you're waiting on the blessing, God is waiting on you to get out of what you in. To walk by faith to do what only he's going to help you do. Newsflash. This is not a discourse for you to walk out of here, resign from your job, and tell everybody Pastor Adolph told you to. That's a lie here. What I am telling you to do is get prepared to do it your doggone self. If you can work for them, you can work for you. If your hands can work for them, if your mind can do it for them, I feel a shout in me right here. Say this, I can do it for my doggone self. If you can type for them, you can type for you. If you can read for them, you can read for you. If you can lead for them, you can lead for you. If you can organize for them, you can organize for you. If you can run for them, you can run for you. If you can pull it for them, you can pull it for you. If you can sell it for them, you can sell it for you. If you can cook it for them, doggone it, you can cook it for you. Everybody say this, start an enterprise. We use excuses. I don't have the startup capital. My credit bad. I, listen, when you get through making all those excuses, here is what I got to say. Start. Be crazy enough to start in your living room. Make your relatives think you done lost your mind. Start in the bathtub if you got to. Start in the kitchen with an empty pot. Start wherever you are. While you're waiting on God to bless you, God is waiting on you to get started. Say, start an enterprise. For those of you who just got a little bit of faith, lean over and tell somebody, look at me before I start my Fortune 500 company. Because I got to decide now whether I want it to go public or not. Because when God gets through blessing me, I may have to hire you to assist me. Because my dream is bigger than my circumstances. And I got to go on and tell you, I got big thoughts and big dreams about where God can take me. I'm bigger than a paycheck. I'm bigger than a W-2 form. God has given me a vision for my life, a purpose for my destiny, and I plan to get there before I die. Be careful, because as soon as you start, people going to have something to say. You too big, you too broke, you too black, you too white, you too short, you too this, you too that. You don't have enough education, you don't have enough training, you don't have enough money. Let me just go and tell y'all all of this. That's your assessment of yourself. But let me tell you what you ought to do every now and then. Borrow the assessment that comes from your enemies that talk about you every day. Isn't it amazing? Some people talk about you all the time. And they think highly enough of you to know your business and have enough to criticize it. Well, that means you ought to start thinking about yourself like they talk about you. I am good looking. I am going to make it. I may be broke, but everything I got has been blessed by God. I will achieve it. I will accomplish it. I will move it, and I will attain it. I wish I had a prayer in church because I'm about to shout by myself. Say, start an enterprise. Number four, let me hurry because I'm almost out of time. Watch this. Say, start an enterprise. Fourthly, you're going to get out of poverty. Say, borrow only what you need. Listen carefully. There comes a point for you to use what you have. But there also comes a place for you to borrow what you need. Listen carefully. Because the people you borrow from will be blessed in the outcome. You, you, you're so blessed that even people who loan it to you are going to be blessed because they let you have it. God Almighty, I wish I had some people to understand. He tells her, watch this, go borrow pots. Everybody say borrow pots. Do you hear that? Say borrow that. Can I give you all the second shout? She starts as a beggar, but she's been elevated to a borrower. Hold on, because when the story is over, she's going to end up being a businesswoman. 
who has benefits for everybody else. See, people get caught in the process. But don't give up in the process because God ain't through with the product. There's a big difference between the process and the product. And people see your process and become discouraged. But don't get discouraged. Go on through the process because the product is God is going to bless you like crazy. And everybody around you going to be blessed because God has blessed you. Everybody say borrow. Borrow. Uh Uh-huh. That means you got to put your pride in your purse, your ego up. Say borrow. That means you got to stop taking rejection personally. And when people tell you no, you say, God bless you, but it's your blessing you're missing. Say, borrow. Borrow. That means don't be ashamed to do it. It means position yourself well to do it because what you got is good, but God is going to add to it by having you, everybody say, borrow. borrow. Fifth, watch this next point. Say, use what you have. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. What you need to come out of poverty, what you need to move your paycheck one decimal point to the right. Okay, y'all missed that. Okay, let's try it again. What you need to take a hundred and make it a thousand. What you need to take a thousand and make it ten grand. What you need to take 10 grand and make it 100 grand. What you need to pay off the house with. What you need to pay off the car with. What you need to send the kids to school with. What you need to be blessed with. Y'all ready for this shout? You already got it. Lord have mercy. Stop looking for it. Stop searching for it. It's at your house. Tell your neighbor, it's at my house. Y'all ain't shouting because you thinking I ain't got nothing at my house. I just left my house. That's why I came with a church house. But I submit to you what you need to be blessed financially with. You already have it. You just don't know that you got it. The woman says, I don't have nothing but a little oil. Here is what's wrong with what we got. It's how we see it. The woman sees it as just a little oil. But the man of God says, "Uh uh-uh, that's your financial enterprise. See, what you see is just a gumbo pot. But you didn't miss the whole idea that folk going to be lined up all over the country trying to get your roof. All you see is just a car. You didn't miss the limousine service that's behind it. All you see is just a pair of shoes. What you don't see is the enterprise that's going to come behind it. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, what you need for your financial breakthrough, you already have at your house and you just don't know it. And when God reveals it to you, you're supposed to start using it right then and right there for your financial benefit and your financial gain. Pastor Adolf, how do I know what I have? How do I find out? Are you ready? Other people make you use it for them for free. I'm preaching so good I'm about to pull my hair out. Here is how you know what your gift is. Your friends, your family, your frenemies and people around you say, hey, will you do this for me? And you with your retarded self go on over there talking about, I'll hook you up. I'll help you out. Let me see, can I help you? And then they don't pay you nothing to do it. And you walk up saying, okay. And they call you back the next time saying, hey, will you do this for me? Tell your neighbor, if you can do it for free, you can do it for a fee. Preach, Pastor Adolf. At the end of the day, I'm doing so good, I'm about to shout by myself. You missing the fee attachment. Let me see the hands of those. Man, my time is up. Let me see the hands of those who help people for free all the time. Isn't this a trip? Now watch this. How many of y'all want to see God increase your financially? Hey, did y'all notice something? That's the same people. (laughs) 
Your financial breakthrough is attached to what's been free for others. Hey, do you bake for free? Do you bake for free? Thanksgiving come around every time I can you do the sock to me cake? I ought to sock you to me. That's what I ought to do. <laughs> I got a sock it to me, you know. I'm broke. I just start charging fifteen fifty for every one of them jokes. Why? Because it comes with a fee. Your financial enterprise is connected to what you got going on around you. Do you understand that? Last principle. Let me hurry up. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because I got to stop. We'll try to pick up next Sunday. Watch this. Everybody say, start working with what you have. Can I throw this second one in too? Say, shut the door behind you. Listen carefully. What God is about to do for you you cannot take everybody with you. You're going to have to close your door. Negative people close the door. Silly people close the door. Nosy people mm -mm, close the door. Messy people close the door. Unbelieving people close the doggone door. Some family members shut the front door and the back door. Oh, I feel a shout, my God. Listen, why? Because what God is about to do for you, everybody can't even get with. It's too big for them to understand because you might not even understand. Watch this. Second, everybody said, go to work. For yourself. Hold on, say go to work. For your doggone self. Hey, watch this, watch this, watch this. The oil pours slowly. So picture this. All she got is a cruise. Handful. Lord says, go borrow all the vessels you can put in your house. Every pot, every pan. Every dish, go to your crazy neighbor, the one that you don't like and they don't like you, borrow. Close the door. Go to work. Use your boys. Bring me that next pot. Picture this in your mind. The little bit of oil pour slowly. So they got to work all day filling one pot. That pot full. At pot full. Junior, this pot almost full. Here come mama, bring me a pot. That's his whole job. He the pot bringer. Use him for something. He been eating up everything. Use him, use him. Oh my God, I'm about to cry. Can you see how she felt after five pots got full? Who else but God could take what's small and make it run over? Who else but God could take a little and make it a whole lot? Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell y'all something I discovered? I discovered this and it shouted me. Craig LeBlanc just shouted me. The oil ran out when she ran out of jars. Okay, you're missing your whole shot. The oil stopped when her pots ran out. Which lets me know if she would have borrowed more pots, she'd still be pouring. In other words, what God is about to do for you is as big as you can see it. Because God says, I'm bigger than that. What you got, I'm bigger than that. Where you are, I'm bigger than that. But you got to keep on believing God for what he's going to do. Y'all, I got to go. Let me tell you this. God says, start it yourself. God says, work for you in faith. God says, borrow what you need. God says, close the door on crazy negative people who can't see what God is about to do for you. And when you get through shutting the door, go to work and use what you already got. And the increase is already yours. Everybody shout increase. Overflow. 
Can I give y'all the end of the story? She sells all she has. Don't y'all want to know who she sold it to? Y'all ain't on the boat yet. She has oil, but she got to sell it. Guess who she sold it to? The people she borrowed the jars from. Your stuff going to start off empty. Woo! My God. But it's going to end up full. Can we give God a full shout right quick? Hold on. This is for everybody in here who's going to do some stuff for yourself in faith. I want you to thank God right now for your increase and your overflow and the blessing of the Lord on your life. Hallelujah. 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 Let me see the hands of those who say, Pastor Adolph, I want God to increase me. Hey, come to this altar right now. Come, 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 come. Just wait. Skip over the people that ain't in that line. Hurry up and get here. If you want God to bless you, it's your time. It's time to walk. We're going to take that second principle and seek the wisdom of God. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's righteousness. It's your day today. If you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, this place is for you. You ought to get to know Jesus, the one who can provide. The word says he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That's what he did for this woman and her son today. He supplied everything they needed. But they had to seek God. You might not have a church home today. Amen. You need to have a church home. So you can get with the man of God who's opening the word of God and feeding your soul the word, the things of God. So you could know how to reap the benefits of God. So don't leave today without getting what you need from God. Baptism, if you need baptism, you get it here. If you don't want it here, we'll get you to the place where you want to get it at. But you need to get with God today. A church home, we'll get you there. Counselors, wave at God's people. Deacons, wherever you are, even if you're in the crowd, wave at God's children. If you need a church home, see one of these waving hands. Because we want to get you to the proper place where you get your name on the church roll, where you can be a part of a church. Where well, our prophet, our pastor is preaching the truth. He's feeding our soul. We're planting our seeds in fertile soil. If that's you today. See one of these waving hands. Don't leave without doing what you're supposed to do today. Seek God. Now with our heads bowed, let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you for these who've come. We're going to ask Minister Ruth now if she would come and offer our closing prayer. With our heads bowed down, let's go before the throne of God. Father God, as once again, your people, we humble and bow ourselves down to you, O oh God. Father God, for we have heard your word this morning, O oh God. God, we're tired of being sick and broken. We're tired of being broke, O oh God. We're tired of being sick in our bodies, O oh God. We're tired of facing people, Lord God, that keeps putting us down. Lord God, we come to you right now, sick and tired, oh God. But Father God, the reason why we come to you because we know that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We know, Lord God, that there is nothing too hard or too impossible for you, oh God. That's why we come to you, Lord God, because you can make our enemies be still, oh God. Father God, we come to you because you're a burden bearer. You're a heart fixer. You're a mind regulator. Lord God, we come to you right now, Lord God, just as we are weary, broken. Lord God, we come to you right now, Lord God, because you can fix it. You're the only one who can do it, oh God. We have tried, oh God. We have tried to fix it ourselves, oh God. But I know right now, Lord God, because we come to you, oh God, because we decided to seek you first, oh God, and not turn to man. God, we put it in your hands. 
And we know that if we put it in your hands, oh God, you will fix it. You will turn it around. You'll take that child, oh God, that has just been unruly, oh God, and you'll turn him around, oh God, where he will be obedient, oh God. You will take our finances, oh God, where we can, don't have enough to pay our bills, Lord God. You'll turn it around, Lord God, because your word said that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, oh God. So right now, Lord God, we gonna thank you in advance, oh God. We gonna give you the praise, oh God, because you're worthy of it, oh God. You'll fight our battles for us, oh God. You'll open doors that no man can close, oh God. You'll close doors that no man can open, oh God. So right now, Lord God, with our hands lifted up, we gonna give you praise in advance, oh God. We're gonna shout in advance and give you praise, oh God. Because you are worthy of it, oh God. We give you thanks, oh God, right now. Thank you, oh God. We give you the glory because you're worthy of it, oh God. And Father God, when they ask us how we done it, when they ask us, oh God, how we made it, we won't take the credit for ourselves, oh God. We'll tell them that it was nobody but Jesus. Nobody but God. Nobody but, nobody but you, Lord. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the praise, oh God. For thou art truly worthy of it. And Father God, for those that are right here at your altar, Father, this week we ask, we decree, and we declare, move in their lives, oh God. Move on their behalf right now, oh God. Father God, don't let this week pass by without your hand moving in their lives, oh God. You've heard their prayer and their supplications. You've heard their plea and their petition, oh God. So I ask it right now. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory, oh God. Do it for your glory, oh God. Do it for your glory. It's in the mighty, magnificent, wonderful name of Jesus that we pray and that we say amen, amen, amen. As we go out now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to the present and other wise God, our Savior, to our Lord and Jesus Christ, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen.